welcome back to another episode of Porn Star Confessions. Today I have got Reese Rideout, who has been in this industry, dear God, way too fucking long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well put. So, how the hell have you stayed around? Like, you got started in, like, early 2000, right? Yeah, yeah, early. Um, like, 03, doing photos. Wow. And um, some solo, 04, and then with Randy Blue in 05. How have so, you stayed yeah. relevant this long? That's insane. Yeah. Um, I think being always trying to learn more about marketing. What got me big before is funny videos, creative stuff um, on YouTube. That was, but then Randy too. Randy was such a mogul in the industry. If you were honest in his company and you did good, performed well, you were a nice person, you know, he would, he would shoot you up and, and they had back then there's, I think that's the other thing too. Back then it was like the big studios, maybe you had four or five of them, six of them. So it was like the 1950s of the TV era. Uh -huh. So you just got so massive because there was no other option. Now there's 10 million, you know, fan sites and pages. You can't even compete to try. It's so hard, so hard to get out there. So I had that name built, luckily, before things got watered down with live camming in 2010. Um, and then, you know, moving on to fan sites now. Yeah. No, I just, no, I mean, my hat's off to you. I mean, the fact that you've been around as long, I mean, 20 years, that's, yeah. Most people only last a few years. Yeah, right. So, I mean, well, obviously, well, you're you. doing some right shit. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's even more work now. Back then, back then, I showed up once a month and got a big fat paycheck. Now, I'm editing 10 hours a day, <laughs> marketing as well as that, another few hours. And it's, um, oh boy, it's a lot of work now. So, Based on what you just said, I'm assuming you liked it way more back then. The, uh, yeah, I well, I like the aspect of oh, owning your own business and being able to make as much as you want um, and having a control of your branding and content. Back then, you know, they made great stuff because it was studios. You got your check. You worked once or twice a month at max. And then you had the rest of the month to do stuff but then they also had you by the balls um and if if you got your contract cut you're out um which happened in 2010 i had a contract for five years with randy blue but since things switched to live camming they're like here go sit in your room and make some money <laughs> <laughs> but you can still get cut today even with only fans or you know, the, any of those fan sites, there's still that possibility. Yeah, no, that's true. So, uh, before we talk about like, your life and your life story, because I know it's going to come up in there, but, like, you do gay for pay, which is, mm, I don't want to say controversial. Like, some gay guys are like, oh, my God, that's so fucking hot. I love that. And then others are like, no. And I don't know. I, I'm just curious. What is your experience like? Back in the day, that's that was the term that just got you in the door, shot you up. Um, but as as things or people become more enlightened, um, that yes, I see the the argument of give that job to a, a fully gay guy that, that, and that's understandable. And I, you know. I hope that they get hired where they want to and the work that they want. And then I also, nobody is fully, they're not fully gay. You got the Kinsey scale. Yeah. Um, I mean, sure. Sometimes if I'm super horny, I like something up my ass. You know, <laughs> if, if, if there's a, you know, if, if I am getting, if I do bottom, which is rarely, I, I think of myself as a female, you know, to, yeah. that's what, so, you know, you're not fully there. And, and the other thing too is, would you say to Christian Bale, an American psycho, you're not really a murderer. 
<laughs> no filming for you. All right. That's a point. <laughs> yeah. That's a point. But but everybody's been so. I don't hear the negative personally towards me, extremely rarely, um, and which is which has been good. It's a few times a year I might get a comment, and sure it might be behind the back, and that's fine. But it, most of the stuff I get from the fans is is positive, and and they're happy I'm here, and I'm happy they're here. I wouldn't be here without them. So yeah. there's a mutual a symbiotic relationship we've had over the years. I I gave you dick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and abs <laughs> and you give me <laughs> and I, I what you were yeah the sound bite you were referring to before we started this I still remember that sound bite to this day <laughs> it's, it's uh, I, I made that shirt like 10 years ago maybe 15 years ago I made it and nobody bought it um, I, I just had one around myself then I had it redone more professionally with the artist. Nobody bought it. But the shirt, yeah, the saying is so great. Straight porn is for pussies. <laughs> it's, it's a double meaning. You know, maybe even more than a double. Dude, I love it. I I was laughing my ass off. This is like, oh my God, that is the greatest shirt ever. Thanks. Yeah, it even had Nathan rolling as soon as as soon as the pussies is coming out, and he's like catching what I'm saying. <laughs> oh my god! No, I think that is probably one of the best shirts I've ever heard of. That's. that's I, I kind of want to put it. You know how they have the YouTube guys like Danny Duncan, uh, or I love Wet Moms or something. They have one silly shirt. They just push and push and push, and it becomes. They're like, I know that's Danny Duncan's shirt, yeah. or whoever the YouTuber is. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. It's a tough one to wear in public, even for myself. <laughs> Matter of fact, the, that's true. I don't think I have. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think you would definitely have to. Uh, it would depend on where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, no, I I would wear it to the grocery store. I mean, granted, everyone there knows me, but yeah, yeah. But they're they're getting away with like I love wet moms or virginity rocks. That's another big one. Okay, not too far off from pussies. No, definitely not. So, <laughs> with all that said, like, where does your story begin? Because I remember reading a. a <laughs> about a sticker a high school girlfriend gave you oh yeah 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 um that that might have been a little bit of a seed that was planted and um it, it just said porn star on it and i put it on my binder and i kind of pretend i'd walk around i'm a porn star so that along with the chronic obsession of masturbation allowing me to to be, to gain full control of my superpower <laughs> <laughs> is training um, up to the day to be able to go to do what I needed to do. I, I know those go hand in hand and um, it, was, it was always a cool thought uh, to be a porn star. So what did you do before porn? What was your life like? First, first job was car wash. I think about 15 moved over to Walmart, then Coca-Cola, Merchandiser, and then um, T-Mobile call center. Um, and then that's where I met my wife in 2002, uh, just just before. So she'd been with me for the, from the beginning oh, wow. before I got into the industry. So she went through all the questions and stuff. And, Damn. And, but so she went down a slippery slope just as I did as I went down to LA each month. It's just going to be a little jail. Oh, it's just going to be a, a little sucky sucky on my cocky cocky. And then next time down, I'll just do a little sucking on them. Yeah, you know, just a little sucking. It's a bit more money. And then, um, and then, um, you top and, and then you bottom. So she was with the whole ride and the emotions that come along with it. Wow. That's, really really impressive i mean because it, it I, 
I feel like it's one thing if you were already a porn star and then you met your wife, you know, so it's like, okay, this is what I do. You need to accept this. It's something else entirely when you marry her and then you're like, oh, hey, what was that like? Yeah, well, everybody's different. Everybody has a different level of openness or, or that they have in a relationship. But we we, we didn't have that, um, especially being very new in, in relationship. So it was an ease in. It was definitely lubed up a lot to get to get that in and they know they know down in LA with these young guys what they're what they're doing bringing them in for just to do a little jack off scene you know you jack off at home right yeah and then <laughs> then they then they hook line and sinker <laughs> but um i i also did some some straight porn back in 05 too and she uh she didn't know about that because I knew she would have got more upset. Yeah. She eventually found out a few years later and got really upset. Oh, and, um, and that would, but o- o- over time now she's become, she comes, helps out a lot with, with the business. She always did help out with the, the gay side with um, marketing and helping answer emails and stuff. But, Straight porn, not so much. Now with OnlyFans, because it's hard to do the crossover with mainstream, but I can produce my own straight porn. I've been doing a little bit. And she says, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. That was a few years ago. Now that since she went to the Gavians, Avians along with me, she's like, wow, this is glamorous. And and, and, um, so now she got her dress ready for for the Gavians and Avians already. Um, so she sees it more viable as a, you know, career. Um, cause I, I took a little break with the cupcake shop, but after we came back into it, um, it was kind of like heads on. Uh-huh. This is, this is the only way I've been somewhat, it's not even successful. I mean, as a male porn star, you don't make much, you know, yeah. so I get by, um, but that's the that's the game yeah no i get that and i can easily see why she would have a much bigger problem with straight porn versus gay porn that makes yeah sense it'd be like Uh, yeah it does oh you're going to work okay that's fine versus what she look like what she feel like what how big were her tits like is it like that big of a difference yeah. Well, uh, you know, it it was when you got a few few straight scenes, not that often, you know, few and far between, it, it was very exciting. But like when you when you do a lot just as you do uh with, well with the gay it's always been more business like for me. With the straight I'd look forward to it. But like I just got back from Vegas and I filmed nine scenes in 3 days of straight stuff and it's literally just motion through. So I now enjoy more the two minute come in the sex hall at home and roll over. Keep let the dick dry off and go to bed. <laughs> it's much more enjoyable now for me. Um because yeah, it just feels better because you you're going work you got you know you got two minutes, work towards the pop shop, but when you're doing a stu- or studio or studio type, a pro am type, yeah. you're trying you're trying to do your best. You're sweating, and you're going through different positions and lines. You guys make up on the fly, you know, improv. Yeah. Nine shoots in three days. Yeah. How the fuck yeah. did your dick not fall off? Ooh. Um. Massive, massive Viagra. And then when I take too much, I start to get like tracers. Yeah. As as my hands move, it kind of, you get like this greenish yellow follow behind yeah. in the lights. Um, so, you know, there's a total of maybe 300 plus milligrams in a day. Holy shit. Yeah, a lot. 
And and if I had to, a little tribex. But I'd I'd try and wait because I didn't. I'm shooting from ten to eight p.m. waiting for scenes to pop up or ones I get pulled into. So I I don't want to shoot trimix in the morning. Yeah. Because <laughs> because then you you might be fucked with a hurting cock around five p.m. and you still got to do another one. Yep. Oh, I've been there. God, that sucks. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm-mm. No, try makes is like once a day at most. Yeah, like, and then you, yeah, we are one. That's recommended. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> when you got to, you got to. So I'm like, I hate it when it doesn't go down. Though it's just the worst. Oh God, yeah. Have you ever tried Afrin to make you go down? Yeah, I'll, I'll actually I'll pull I'll pull back a little bit of the prescribed. Um, vaso, um, constrictor. Yeah. The phenylephrine, just cause I know it has some benzyl alcohol in it. And then I'll go over to my Afrin bottle and pull a little bit. Yeah. So I know it's somewhat sterile, but you got to be careful. That shit's strong. Way, way no, higher Afrin concentration. Than... Oh, in my nose. Yeah. That, that doesn't work for me. Really? Oh, my, you're all just, Mine... just recently told me about it. It works for me. Like, amazing. Well, I'll get, I'll give it a try again. Um, I mean, I had a, I had a 19 hour boner once because I fell asleep and thought it didn't. That was horrible. And the other time, I wouldn't go down, and I'm trying to get through security at the airport so I can get in the restroom and do another shot. And and sure enough, it alerts on my growing area. Oh. <laughs> and the the TSA, you know, I, I'm going. I know I know what to do. Um, but I told him before he tells me to turn around and pats me down, I go, so just to let you know, um, I just got done filming a porno and it's not down. I still have an erection. And he's like, oh, huh? He's turn around. <laughs> and then he gets down on his hands, and, you know, squats down a bit. And he goes, do them, do them, do them, do them. He's like, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Ugh. okay i can honestly say i've never had that happen holy shit yeah no i, I don't know for me i like to avoid taking the fennel at all costs so i'll do afrin up my nose six sudafed and then like energy drinks or working out mm. that will yeah damn near any of them that's a good stepping stone to to try because i just I'll have to hate to give that method it. oh my god yeah so going back how did they rope you into the the first um we just wanted to see you jerk off scene yeah because you were you did bodybuilding for a while right <clears throat> that's what got me into it yeah oh, the, the, my first photographer at um, at a show in Washington, little amateur show. So, so I got a phone call from him later at my parents' house when I was 21 or so. And, um, he promised me to get into, you want, you'd be great for Playgirl, right? I shoot for Playgirl. Well, fuck, that's the biggest magazine ever at that time. I mean, it was, magazines were, you know, in their downturn, but that was, so he took me out to Washington um, we, we did some shoots. He no, never got me in Playgirl, but ultimately I did get on the cover with Greg Wiener in like 09, one of their last issues, second to last. But that was the initial thing that got me in. Um, and then he was, we did little solo videos, body solo with Ron Lloyd. Once the magazine started to come out, because it was a slow process back then for like be printed and selections. Um, Mighty Men got me out to DC. I think that actually was my first duo porno. Um, Brent Everett, I did a duo sh- shoot with, just so a still photo shoot first. But Mighty Men going out there, flying by myself. I, I coming back, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know if this is. It was it was just an odd situation because it was in his apartment, this little apartment in DC. He just had computers all over the place doing websites and he'd just bring boys and film them by himself and 
they tried to get me to pee. I couldn't. I'm bladder shy. Um, we, I think I'm, I don't, I don't remember if I sucked or fucked on in that one. I, might, I think it was just sucking. Um, but then Randy Blue, once I got in magazines called two, he laid thing everything out really nicely. You know, you have a hotel here, you have privacy, we have assistance. There's people on set to make sure things are right. And to let you know that this, this will be out forever. You're going to, oh. this is never going to leave just to let you know before you um, come down and, and do all this. So that's what I was talking to Sean Cody at the same time. It was Randy that same week before I made the decision. Um, Gino, I think his name was a re recruiter back then, but I ultimately went with Randy. Gotcha. I don't know, like, what has that been like for you watching the industry evolve and all that? Because, you know, it's one thing to, like, have been a consumer on the outside, but, I mean, you've lived through everything, like, inside of it. Yeah. Yeah, the evolution, I mean, everything evolves, um, every plant human company so it's not like it's ever going to stop no. but you have to be the first one in on the you have to foresee the future of what what the change is with your business and I'm, I'm glad it went this way so now it's more controlled by the the, ta the talent it, itself um it's oversaturated but um so if you were starting today man it's that's a that's a tough one, unless you're a female. That can, they just blow up. You show show some titties and you just blow up. If you got a little work ethic as a female, you'll do fine. Yeah. But the gay industry, my studio work slowed down the last few months. I think it's because, um, you got two guys filming. They're very business oriented. Each guy likes to fuck a lot. They're fucking each other a lot. And they're marketing very well, and the studios can't keep up. Yeah, it's it's tearing. I think it's tearing them up. They're, but yeah, I don't know. What do you do? Like when you jerk off, are you watching studio stuff or like content creation? Uh, usually studio, but I do like I do the tube sites, so. Um, okay. I, I don't have sites I, I pay a monthly for. I mean, I might have in the past, but very rarely. And I, I always switch it up. It depends on the day, what I feel like, you know, what I want to watch. And it always, always changes. And then I sit there trying, clicking through videos to find the best one and the best spot. <laughs> Oh my god. It's true. Yeah, no, I am guilty of the same thing where you keep you gotta find the perfect one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how has porn positively and negatively impacted your life? Because it's one thing to like be in the industry for a couple years and then okay, but like I mean, this has been a career for you. Mm-hmm. There, there's been a lot of positives and negatives, um, and and some of the negatives, you know, I may not even know because you're you're in the the throw of it, so you don't even understand how has that affected you. Because um, you, you just you're just too deep in it. But the positive is, has been uh, a career and being liked by people, accepted, and knowing that you have fans and friends i mean i've i've met some of the great my great friends through the industry and and that's that's just awesome and you, and now i can do whatever i want um with filming right now i'm doing drwriteout.com and and the, the, some of the skits are silly and you know you get to have a blast with it and uh ne negative wise i think uh, 
being around too much drinking um, at clubs, a lot of partying, especially in the younger days out in West Hollywood, um, doing tours at, at clubs, um, and not being able to be in the main in, mainstream movies because of porn, getting turned down from commercial um, commercials, uh, especially nationwide. I mean, I've done some local key afford commercials and stuff but <laughs> they wouldn't put me on nothing nation <laughs> yeah that's some <sighs> i i'm just trying to think cuz i can you're not the first person to mention that like uh izzy um forget her last name having a brain fart uh but she really wants to get into mainstream acting like you're not the first person to mention that and it's like you go and then they learn about the porn and it's like not so much like what the fuck like why does that have to be bad yeah i know they're all they're all watching it themselves and yeah. um maybe even some of them are producing it but they know that uh um yeah, it's just it's just tough if someone someone younger looks up your name, even if you have two different names, they they tie it in and and they, they're they're a business and they they just don't want to hurt the the bottom line, and and I you know I get it, I get it from that perspective, but but let, let let us just be in at least rated R movies, you know, yeah. or make make a rated slash X one X. More more mainstream, um, and I mean it's also hard too if you don't live in LA. I I never have lived there. I've I've been in around the Portland Oregon area. Um, I know I know a big agent out in LA, and he told me to come down. I just I got a I got a house early on to, out here, and it was hard to do both um, with just funds and stuff. And I still want to, um, but. The, the whole movie thing right now is kind of tough for me just because I had a movie production company with my brothers since 2009 and my brother committed suicide recently in, in the, on Halloween and we found him. So it's kind of like, it, you know, it's will dreams come true or, or will they not? And he, he was a part of that um, company. So I, I am working on something right now. Crystal, we started that. He actually came and helped me build some of the set. So, you know, it'll be in memory of him. But these these things are taking a lot of money, a lot of time, and it it's it's hard to do movies on your own. Um, but we'll we'll keep pushing, try try things and the dream stare is still there a bit, but I'm getting older now and I I said, I want to, I want, I want to change. I want to be different. That's why you're seeing the grays and the and mustache. I wanted to, <laughs> and, um, yeah, but I might die it back. We'll see. Yeah, no, I, I'm sorry, baby brother. I, I know firsthand what that feels like and it fucking, Ugh. yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I just. Like, I'm just trying to think objectively, like, why having a porn star as an actor would be controversial. Like, okay, I can understand, like, uh, you know, why you wouldn't want to, to cast someone in a commercial or in a movie who's politically polarizing, because... There, you hmm. just lost fifty percent of your audience. That I I understand. Oh, yeah. That makes sense, but I don't feel like porn stars are polarizing. I mean, I... yeah, yeah, that's a um, good way to look at it. But the the yeah, every, everybody that is making what there's a lot of people watching porn, yeah. whether you're religious or not. There is a huge portion. 
I mean, the OnlyFans is is all porn. They try and play it off. Um, but what's interesting too is t- uh, just yesterday, Shopify cut ties with with OnlyFans. I mean, they used to allow you to have some products up on the side of your homepage, but they cut ties. It's yeah. I did not. Know you you make. Making me want mine. <laughs> I did not know that about Shopify. But, like, you're absolutely right. I would be wagered that I would say in the majority of people watch porn. So why is it that they're so demonized? Is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's a good question. To, to I don't think it's ever been answered. I'm, but... But, you know, I was in just because they like me personally firsthand before. uh, Because if you don't know the person personally, I think there's a problem. If you have a director that knows them, they're like, I know they're a good person. They're my friend. I'm going to cast them. And I I actually got in recently, a couple years ago now, a movie called The 211 Home. It's a Christian Christmas movie. I got to play the dad in. And it's soon to be on Pure Flix, like Netflix. Um, and, um, so that's exciting. And, uh, and they know me, so they, they cast me, but they put me through the runners to cast. They, and it was, it was a awesome experience. And the dude, he was very church oriented and I, you can take a lot of good teachings from all, from all types of religions. And each day we did a pre-rehearsals before filming that night. We almost got a lesson of just how to be a good person. And um, it was great being on set with them. I really liked that. Wow. Okay. So what would you ideally like to do? Movies. Movies. I always get caught up in trying to do some business to make money for movies. But business is hard. Like I had the cupcake shop with the family 2012 to 14. It was fully to make money for movies. We... The family came and helped out, but we had a, a rival coffee shop person that took some siblings away, paid them more, made it hard. Um, I now was working on, for the last two years on an app, a Stripogram, and it just never went through. And I finally got a friend to be a consultant, and we're cutting ties. But two years of just monthly payments, and once I added that up, it was like, holy fuck. And I'm not getting you know, nearly a third of back um, because they don't normally do refunds, but they know that they did not follow through. And I still want to do that, but everything pulls you different directions. I'm doing the, I'm doing the gay stuff with Reese right out dot club. I'm doing the straight stuff with Dr. Right. I'm trying to make two different films there for two different markets. And then it's hard to find the straight market because the straight guys don't want to look at me. So you got to film a lot of the girl, a lot of snapshots. The promo photos have to be different. Um, I have to think differently because, but I also want to be the star. So I try to film my ass. <laughs> well, fuck. Get my face. No, up here. Not just her. Look at me. <laughs> and so many different things. And, uh, and I mean, there's probably more things than more. Yeah, the Crystal movie. And I'm sure I got a few other things I can't even remember I'm working on right now. Lots, lots of stuff. Yeah, that is interesting, though, because, like, I can't remember who point. I was trying to explain porn to someone the other day. Like, porn, there's a completely different way that it's shot, whether the intended audience is male or female. Mm. Like, is it, you know, because if you have, like, a gangbang, right? With the woman, you're basically going to see her, you know, face and body, and then just a bunch of dicks, right? But if it's <laughs> yeah. like for a female yeah. audience, it's going to be more of like a wide shot where you can see all of the guys and the girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So it's, you know, people don't realize those subtle differences. Like, depending on who the target audience is, it's completely different with the way it's filmed. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was, as I, as I edit more and film more and try and find that, that target audience, I got to go, kind of got to go one way or the other, but 
Because if, if I'm watching porn and you just see some balls and asshole pounding the pussy, like, oh, more asshole, more balls than pussy, you know, I might fast forward a bit. And even while I'm editing, if I look at myself and pretend I'm a different person, do I like that shot? Am I like, oh, who's that dude? No. And I mean, also, though, too, like, you don't want to focus too much on the one, the, the women because I know a ton of gay men who watch straight porn. Like a ton of gay men. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like to see him fuck. Yeah. They they show a lot of the guys, and that's more marketed towards gay men uh, who like to see women fuck. So you got, yeah, maybe get a little both in. Hit, hit both sides. Give each person a little flavor. I do not envy your job on the straight side, dude. Fuck that. <laughs> that sounds like a nightmare. Like trying oh, yeah, to edit yeah. all that. Like, how do you have time? Like, because obviously, like, you still work out. Like, you, I mean, granted, you're dressed the way you are right now. But for those of you watching, Reese's body is like fucking jacked out of his mind. But like, obviously, <laughs> you're doing that. You're doing Reese right out. You're doing Doctor right out. You're doing the app. All this, like, what the fuck? I mean, yeah, it's uh, it's so overwhelming. Um, but uh, you, I got to keep chugging along. You know, I chose this path of entrepreneurship, and um, but I have so many ideas. If I if, if I'm at this. Because the porn's kind of paying for everything. Yeah. The gay the gay porn's paying so I can film straight porn. The gay porn's paying for the app. The gay porn's paying for the car. The gay porn, you know, it's it starts out like that and goes down. And I, I just, I'm just trying to hit the jackpot on one of these things and inventions I've worked on, sex toys I have, um, and without enough funds, it's you got to do a lot yourself. I'd like to be the orchestrator at the top um, in conducting the musicians to having the workers. Be Henry Ford at the top of the building, pushing a red button to get the answer um, and, and create jobs for people. But it, it's uh, passing that passing that threshold. If I was on the straight side and a, a girl, oh, here's a few hundred thousand for your pussy, you know, in OnlyFans. And, oh, I'll just use that on a nice uh, McLaren. Or, or Lambo. Yeah. I would I would reinvest it. Um, is what I would do. Yeah. So does, I would I would buy that eventually, but of course. So does your wife help you with all of this stuff still? A lot, a lot. But um, it was things were going pretty pretty darn good when I went out and was doing my first uh, tour and you know filmed with. Bo Butler, Pierce Paris, and um, a bunch of other bigger names. And so things jumped up. After I lost my Twitter on October 28th, um, and just from the stress after that, in November cut. I had, I had her on full salary. Um, so things slowed down. Sometime around January, I had to pull her off. So she's currently driving uh, for like Uber Eats and Grubhub. That's where she's at right now. Um, and we're just kind of keeping trying to bring it up. I just turned everything to no PPV on on the the Reese ride out one, trying to give more value. The because there's so many people, you gotta change it to Walmart and um, more videos. Um, keep more fairness instead of some people can't afford the extra PPVs. Yeah. Each month, so yeah, just trying to put it all up there, and it's going back up a little bit. But then no studio work is along with that too, and no stripping. Stripping's been slow, um, whether it's because it's the the economy, or I've been traveling trying to do other films to produce myself. And then Darcel's another club I worked at for eighteen years. They after COVID, they just never got the clientele back for the for the dancers after the drag show. So that couple of incomes just dropped, um, but still working. 
Damn, that, I didn't know you also stripped, stripped as well. Yeah, oh yeah. Damn. Yeah, I got my fireman outfit right over there. Oh shit, okay. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing too with drinking, you know, because that's what happens at the bachelorette party. So it's yeah. it's tough to, um, so I, I went five months a little bit ago because that's another thing I saw that's what brought my my brother down to was that but the so I didn't drink for five months first time in 15 years because I was getting ready for Mark Henderson's photo shoot so that kind of also gave me a a goal to go towards and I felt really good but I went out to last around fourth of July I went out to uh it was Fire Island, and I had to, I had to drink out there. <laughs> and so I've been drinking the last month, but I haven't drank today. So nice. So, um, what was I saying that? How did do you know what band your Twitter? Like, do you know what post or whatever you did? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, it was, it was banner profile. So oh, they say shit. that's um public and it was just magazine covers i had been on they weren't nude sure chub uh, but the the men magazine one with like the thing over the shoulder was probably too overtly sexual even though you couldn't see anything um it's this this one right here so i think this is what what got me banned was this photo on on twitter Seriously, so you can see. Oh, there's a yeah. It's a they're doing kind of like the Red Hot Chili Pepper esque sock over the shoulder. Yeah, but with like a vacuum hose. It's a vacuum hose, guys. So oh shit, that's what did it. They didn't give you a warning. They just straight up banned you. I I think six months prior, I was banned for fourteen days, but I had that same photo up for two years. Yeah. Um, I think they just changed policies and it was a 14 day ban. That was why I was out in Florida with, uh, my agent. I was just so stressed out, um, cause things were growing so fast, but I got banned for five months and I put in probably 50 appeals, but, and even two appeals with a robot attorney online and nothing, nothing was working. Um, I even wrote a handwritten letter to Elon Musk telling them the stresses I was going through and things like that and how it's decreased my income and didn't hear a response as, as expected. Um, but one night I was filming with gay room out in Vegas and I, Jake waters brought something up in my mind. I went back to the hotel and just said, I'm sorry for breaking the Twitter rules period. Got it back in eight hours. Cause all the other times I was trying to say, I didn't do anything. So just say you're sorry. I think it's a legal thing too, because then you admit you did it. So now it's off them. Oh my god! I'm sorry I broke the Twitter rules. That's it. Yeah, they got it back in eight hours. I woke up six a.m. I'm screaming at the hotel. Yeah, <laughs> my Twitter! Jumping on the bed. Oh my god! What the. Yeah. yeah, no, that's the Twitter and Instagram both like the number of people I've had complain about them is just unreal. Like, especially Instagram, that's the worst. Because I'm sure you've seen on Instagram women got their fucking titties out, they'll be pulling their bikini up so fucking tight that you can see everything down below. Whereas, dudes, yeah. It's always been biased. Yeah. Yeah, there was a... Years ago, there was a... We, we Hula Hoop Girl did a little viral video. Blew up, like, 10 million views on her. And YouTube back then, 10 million's like, 100 million now. Like, this was 15 years ago. And I was like, well, I can do a version of that. So I do a version. And overnight, I start to, About in a week, I'm, I'm up to a million. You know, I'm taking a lot longer. But I was excited. I'd check it every 10 minutes, so happy, and then they pull it down. I'm doing, like, the same video. Jesus. What? That, that could have been my start right there. 
<laughs> my my second start. So ideally, <laughs> you would love to be like a mainstream Hollywood actor. Yeah, that's that's been that was one of the that was big reasons for going down to L.A. and learn taking that decision um, and rolling with it. And it's got me to meet a lot of people, a lot of of agents, big like biggest in the world agents. And I I'll hang out with them while I'm down there. And I've met with them and other casting people, but they don't give a shit about me, you know. Um, so that's kind of killing the dream. Um, but if I can make some money, I'll 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 make some movies. So. One thing that I'm really curious about, like, in your day-to-day life, are you open about what you do for a living with, like, someone at the gym or grocery store or whatever? I I never have been, um, but recently I'm at the I don't give a fuck mentality, and I'm pushing this, and I'm doing it. Before, my answer would be, I do modeling, if if or underwear modeling, but... Um, but the, now it's like, I, sh- I straight up, I, I, depending on who you are, I, I could say porno or if I'm trying to be nice adult films and I went, <laughs> it's great. I went to a garage sale the other day because <clears throat> I, um, I saw a bunch of glass. I'm like, I like glass. I like the hourglasses, things like that. And, and some old ladies. Yeah. Check it out. I'm, oh, I was dressed as, <laughs> I was dressed as a uh, Ken. From the new Barbie movie, so they're like, "I thought you were like that." I'm like, "I'm like, well, I could be." Um, and I go, "I'm I'm just dressed up as Ken. This isn't my real hair. I'm not really blonde, and I don't normally wear this." But and I go, "But I do. I actually bought this." I told the ladies, the old ladies, "I go, I bought this because I I do adult films, so I had to film a Ken and Barbie scene." And they're and they <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, you're like that." You're one of those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun. Yeah, it's fun telling people. And now I'm so excited to – I was just out in Vegas and I got to do a big gangbang with Richard Mann and Jonathan Jordan and Mysterious and, and Dallas Strokes and um, it was and, – and Dreadsway. And it was so cool to be the only white dude in there. I love showing it to people. I'm like, check this out. And they're like, who's that guy? Who's only white dude? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's me. Yeah, no, I I saw the the promo for that. Uh, yeah, it's fun. So, like, do your friends and family and wife's friends and family know, or not? Yeah, yeah, they they do. Um, <clears throat> uh. My mom, when, when I came out on the cover of Playgirl, my mom, she was so excited. She wanted a copy to show her belly dance friends. But I, I just didn't give her one. I was like, Mom, you're not getting a copy, okay? I don't want you to accidentally flip open a page. Um, the cover's okay. You can show them the cover. But, nah. So I, I never gave her one. Um, we I've never directly said so much. But recently, I walk with my dad every Sunday out of the park. And I, I did mention adult film to him for the first time in like 20 years. I've never, it's always been modeling to him. Um, but we were talking about Elon Musk and and I was excited to tell him I, I wrote a letter to Elon, the second letter to him. And on the front, I said, it's illegal to open unless you're Elon thinking he'll open it. But who knows? He probably has security against that. Um, and, but I did, I told him two things. Your Tesla's, your Tesla's awesome. And two, take me to outer space. Let's film a porno. You can be the director. Choose whatever actress you want, or maybe actor. But um, and w- it would be so cool to be the first to film a porno in outer space and go through some training. And um, and I think it would just it'd be the best, highest um, grossing porno of of all time. Yeah. If it, it once it's done. It's because it's going to happen, and he would be the best person to make it happen. Uh, the other day, his shirt, he's so hes so funny. He said, I love Canada, but he didn't pull it up all the way. Yeah. And it says, I love anal. <laughs> 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 I 
I think you're absolutely right about the first porno in outer space. That that would be the highest grossing porno ever. I I also emailed a while ago, um, e, uh, Bree Mills at Adult Time saying, "Hey, let's do the jet because it's lower cost. You know, it goes up and creates zero gravity. You just have to go up a, a bunch of times. But if you're in true, you know, orbit, fucking." Oh, <laughs> so if you're listening, Elon, let's do this. So do you have any regrets? Like, do you regret doing porn? First question, do you regret doing porn ever? Um, it comes in sometimes just because I, I haven't been able to, um, reach some goals um but some of the goals maybe i have are are pipe dreams but um i don't know what else i would have done i mean after doing this job for a little bit i just can't do a nine to five and i haven't but i'm doing more i'm actually doing more than nine to five <laughs> now now back then it wasn't but yeah. You know, have you seen the Jake Paul documentary on Netflix? No. Do you have Netflix? Yes, yeah. Dude, you and your wife have to fucking watch that. It, oh, really? Like, it is insanely fucking good. And so much of the story, like, ties into you. It it will inspire the shit out of you. There's a quote from that movie. They'll never forget. And it's uh, Jake Paul's brother. And he says, cause they're talking about Jake Paul. How everyone said he was fucking delusional. And he's like, yeah, you're right. You are delusional until you're not. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, I, <clears throat> you know, I've, I've noticed my thoughts are different and aspirations and goals and dreams and most people or they, they give it up and, and, you know, and there's some comfort in having a, a, so, a solid steady job and, and, uh, and things like that and 401k and all that stuff. But I've noticed, and I, I do know, I think differently, but I've, I've come up with a term similar to that. I call it delusionally grounded, but you have to have some delusion to, to grow and expand. Otherwise you're just normal. Oh, yeah. I mean, even when you look at like Arnold Schwarzenegger throughout his career, everyone thought he was fucking crazy. You're delusional. There's no way you're going to be a fucking actor. You can't speak English. You got this Schwartz and schnitzel last name. Nobody can pronounce. Like <laughs> he got told no, no 10,000 fucking times. Yeah. Yeah. Just fucking go for it, dude. But. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, and even with businesses like KFC, you know, he got t turned down a thousand times. Yeah. It's that person that doesn't give up yep. um, and, and keeps trying. Yeah, well, was it was uh, Howard Schultz, the um, founder of Starbucks. What He got turned down by banks 147 times or something. Oh, wow. Well. Like, fucking insane. Yeah, yeah. You just read about that. You're just like, imagine hearing no that many times and still fucking believing it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know, dude. In one of my favorite quotes is uh, by Steve Jobs. The people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who actually do. Hmm. Yeah. That's great. Shit. I believe mean, in it. You could absolutely fucking do it. So. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't know. I think the the future is anything you can make it, honestly. But. Yeah. Like you said. Yeah, I got that. Was it the, Steve, I mean, the Howard Schultz book over there. Yeah. And uh, you had also mentioned something about inventions. Is that something you want to talk about? Um, <clears throat> well, the one I'm working on, I couldn't 
I, I've been work. I'm working on it for a while. I've made a prototype and it's fuck. Oh God. I want to, I've been trying to reach out to doc Johnson. Um, but I, they haven't got back to me cause I, I, I just need a partner in this, but even, you know, and I'll take, I'd take a little cut cause it's a big company. It's not doing it on my own. That's fine. I want to sell it from on my doctor write out website because it helps with sex and it's a, it's a toy that's nobody's ever seen or imagined. And it's insane. It just blows my mind when I, when I use the first prototype and now with technology that's increased the proto, the next prototype, um, cause I, I got the bit, I'm bit again, I want to get it going and it would be great for in alignment with that website and oof, it'd be good. <clears throat> one, one other one I did create that I can talk about that has been out there it was, at the cupcake shop. I was trying to want something new. So I created nitro pops. Um, and I almost got it, um, patented, but it was tough just because you had to patent the process, not the, not the product itself. But we sold it there for a year. What happened was customer would come in and they'd pick their berries or chocolates, coconuts, and then their chocolate milks or milks or juices. And they'd bring it up to the counter and I'd, I'd blend it up and I created this light LED light up station that you drop down into liquid nitrogen, a popsicle mold. And I, I had the time just right and it go ding and go off on the noise and the speakers and I'd pull it out and a little hot water and they'd have their, you know, immediately made ice cream or popsicle. A little wow. bit both. Okay. Yeah, it was fun. It was pretty cool. How, how do you do that? Like make it that fast? Well, liquid nitrogen is sitting like at 300 and something uh, negative degrees. Oh, okay. So it just, yeah, makes it about, I think it's about a minute and a half. It frees it. Shit. Damn. Yeah. I didn't realize that stuff was that cold. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At a big tank. I bought a big tank and I, I drive my little 328 convertible BMW once a week to refill it at the at the gas place and um, bring the, bring it back and lug it in the place. And it was, um, yeah, it's a process, and, but it was, it was, I liked the, its uniqueness. We put it up on um, Groupon, sold like hotcakes, you know, cause Groupon does 50% off and then we get 25%. So you break even, but you get some marketing, a um, little bit, a little bit of profit, but I mean, probably sold thousands of them of coupons for it oh shit yeah <laughs> okay fuck so groupon takes half of what they charge yeah and they yeah they want you to do it normally at a half discount um and then they take half of what you get so you get 25 percent of your normal retail price is the usual um holy shit and in the food industry, that's pretty much what you pay just for the the product. Yeah. Um, but I want to get my cologne on Groupon. I've been trying to get a hold of them. My Reese Ride Out cologne. That'd be so sick. It'd be a roundabout way of marketing porn through Groupon. <laughs> okay. So how in the hell do you come up with your own cologne, though? I I had one that I really liked. Oh, um, one of my favorite colognes. Um, it was, uh, a, a Ford black orchid, Tom Ford, black orchid, um, absolute favorite. So I, I had a company mix together things that would, you know, they probably put in some computer system and I wasn't the scientist behind it yeah. and, and figured out what needs to be mixed in. And then now I buy big bottles of it and then I fill up the little bottles by hand and, uh, package them up and. And sometimes I'll do, if you buy it and it's on Shopify, I'll give you six months or, or three months on, on my OnlyFans. Oh shit. And it's, it's, it's what I've been wearing myself for like over five years. I just decided, you know what, let me, let me try this. Okay. So do you have kids at all? No, no kids. Um, no plan. We, we've tried. Well, we've tried. 
tried for probably the past seven years, but the wife has some uh, pre premature ovarian failure. Oh. So we'd have to do IVF to even have a, a whack at it. Um, and it's just out of the cards at the moment, but yeah. maybe in the future, although time's ticking, yeah. she's 42 and wouldn't have much time left. And yeah, yeah, just so, so far into life now myself at 40. So. Yeah, no, I was going to say, you and I are the same age. Um, oh yeah. I'm wondering if you had the same realization that I did, like, I didn't have a midlife crisis when I turned 40, but all of a sudden I became a lot more aware of like my own mortality. And I was like, Oh shit, I only have this much time left. Like I started becoming a lot more deliberate with how I'd spend my time. And like, did that happen to you? Oh yeah. It's hap It's happening uh, right now. Yeah. And as you get older, you see, just more more friends got this or passed from that and and that's not going to stop just think the people at the top who are 80 90 years old they've seen it the most yeah. and it did you didn't see it back then as a kid or in your 20s so we're we just we're realizing because that and, and the whole 40 you hit a new mile marker and then when you look in the mirror things look a little different too and <laughs> so a little more self-control too and you can uh yeah okay and um one one last question uh i think i read somewhere that you just got a black belt was that oh yeah but yeah, didn't say yeah what? i did okay here i got the should be right here Yeah, I was uh, right here. Oh, Check it out. Shit. Signed by Junkie Yoshida himself. Yoshida Sauce, Teriyaki Sauce. He owns that company. Wow. Pretty cool. Um, 2019, uh, October 5th, right before the pandemic. And uh, what I in? Got it. Uh, Ryobukai. It's a traditional Japanese oh, okay. karate. Damn. Little, little bit of judo, but um, mostly strict form, white geese, and um, lots of respect and all about form and um, Good katas, big on katas. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I was really proud. I've been a little slow on it lately just because pandemic shut everything down. Yeah. And then and then I was making that, our crystal movie for pre pre planning six months filming six months and then other things that happen and it's kind of tough to get back in I, and so many businesses um but i'm always welcome there at, at the how long i did, did go out take? to somebody. when i was um i went when i was nine years old to 12 got out of it just because you go to high school and then i bumped into at a party my old sensei and i was like what sensei john this was in 2014 it's just we were shutting down the cupcake shop so it took five years after but i i already had three experience so they they i, I got bumped up a belt and then then five years so you could say a total is actually eight considering a kid because uh, you never really forget stuff i mean yeah like it's like riding a bike yeah so but with that with that organization you don't get it under five um it's it takes a while to they don't they don't pass you up that fast nice so if you started today and you went three times a week you'd be lucky and to get it in five shit yeah damn and, and a big driver of getting that too for me was I can't be an action movie star unless I have a black belt. <laughs> that was a huge fucking driver. Okay. You know, you, you know, sure you can, uh, somebody could show you on set a few things, but if you know it yourself. Okay. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Um, so 
anything and everything you want to plug because you've got a whole probably more so than anyone I've ever interviewed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I already plugged it in the whole thing, but we'll, we'll condense it down to a quick, uh, Reese right out. Dot club, Dr. Right out. Dot com. You can see Nick dent. Dot com for my crystal movie. You can go to strip dash o dash gram dot com to check out the stripping app, um, which who knows if it's going to get made. Um, but that's one thing I'm working on. And then the 211 home, that Christian Christmas movie, although your fans probably aren't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll throw it out there. So, yeah, that's that's it right now. Um, uh, what about the main, main stuff? Social media fan sites. Yeah, yeah. So social media, I guess the best would be to go to those websites. But IG, the Reese Rideout, Twitter, Reese Rideout XXX, Doctor Rideout Com on Twitter. Um, those are the big ones. I mean, and there'll be a link tree there where you can find like the the TikToks, the YouTube channels, and I'm not that active on those, but okay. Twitter's Twitter's big one. Awesome. Well, I will leave Reese's link tree down below since that's the only one that doesn't violate YouTube, YouTube's terms of service. Um, but seriously, thank you, Reese, for agreeing to do this. Um, really appreciate it. And Absolutely. I, thank I, you I, for having me. It's a good time. I still think that t-shirt can make it <laughs> just, yeah. I think honestly you just gotta make a way to like make it say pussies without saying pussies so you can wear it uh, to places do you see what I mean yeah like yeah triple dollar signs that would be yeah or something be a way. That's, that's a great idea yeah, so, yeah snakes as the S is, um, noodles, spaghetti and noodles that make, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I like the way you're going. We, we might have this redesigned and give it another whack. Yeah. A third whack. Third time's the charm, right? <laughs> well, or, or 10,000. Oh. One to two. It'll work. You never know. <laughs> Reese. So you get it. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. Uh, for those of you watching, thank you so much for sticking around with us this long. Again, I will post all of Reese's stuff down below in the description. Mine's just at Masculine Jason everywhere, and I hope you guys all have an amazing week. Hey guys, just wanted to say thank you for watching this video, and if you did really enjoy it, I just wanted to mention there are two ways that you can help to support this channel. On the right side, there are three little dots. If you click those, there is a super thanks button, and on the left-hand side, there is a join button where you can join this channel. There are three different tiers of memberships. The top tier does actually allow one-on-one -on -one messaging with me via Discord. And I personally answer that. It is not a service. That's just, you know, both of those are ways that you can help support me as a content creator in this channel. I mention this because YouTube is by far the thing that I enjoy doing the most. It's the thing I'm most passionate about. And unfortunately, a lot of the sexual videos the porn star confessions, the dom sub, all that stuff. It is not monetized due to the nature of the videos. But either way, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you guys all have an absolutely amazing week. I love you all.